Good morning. Hi, Donna. How are you? Thanks for joining. Dun, dun, dun. All right. I'm just sharing this, guys. Give me a second. Got one more place to share. And then I'm done. Yeah. All right. I think all that is done. Let's see if I can bring up and make sure I'm getting all the comments. Good morning. Good morning. Um, if you're seeing this, you're, you're seeing this and uh, probably a number of my groups, my main page, Onward No Matter What, um, Team Onward, my customer group, VIP group. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about it today. We are going to talk about, yeah, you know, one of those things we don't like talking about it. Because I don't know about you, but I don't like to be criticized. I mean, I have been. I, I am a lot judged. People say criticism, but I say judge. That's what it feels like. Looking forward to today's session because I'm having a rough morning too. Janae, that's why we're doing it. Thanks, baby. I see you. Hi, Gwenda. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough in life. It's tough in, at work. It's tough in your business because, look, criticism comes from, from all sides of life. It really does. It comes from uh, so many different avenues. I mean, hey, it could be... Um, uh, it could be, oh, you like the pumpkin earrings, Gwenda? Yes, everybody. My customers who are seeing this, these are one, one pair of the new fall earrings. These are the pumpkin spice, yeah, dangle earrings. I love these. I'm wearing them for the first time today. It's so much feeling like fall here. It's in the 60s. It makes me very, very happy. Very, very happy. Hi, Tony. Good to see you. Um, but criticism, and look, you're going to, I'm 60 years old, y'all. And I swear I've been critiqued my whole life. I was critiqued as a child. Always expected to do better than everybody else. I was critiqued in school. I was, I, I needed to be the good girl. You know, I needed to be teacher's pet. I needed to be all these things. Um, and, you know, and then when you know that you're giving your all, which in so many cases you are, and yet somebody wants to critique you. Somebody wants to criticize you for whatever your journey is or whatever your decision is that you make. Good morning, Tiff. Good to see you, my friend. <coughs> and for me, hey, Tiff. Tiff. Yeah, I'm having a pumpkin spice. Don't judge me, Tiffany. I saw you post, but I know you weren't directing it to me. And you know I'm going to have me some pumpkin spice, Tiff. So... I know it's not the healthiest. I'm here to tell you I get it. But Jesus told me I I could have a little guilty pleasure. So so I am. Here I am. Here I am. So don't 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 criticize Tiff. She doesn't. She loves me. Just saying. Um I know Tiff, me too. Tiffany, when you come, let me tell you what Lee got me. Lee got me some of the um the pumpkin spice and he got himself gingerbread of this syrup the syrup you just put like a squirt or two in your coffee to die for girl not a latte you just put it in your coffee right so it's like so good so if there's any left the next time i see you we're gonna have to have some of that okay we're gonna have to have that hi quentin good to see you uh, Tony, I love I love their coffee. I mean, I drink it here. I fix Starbucks here. It's my coffee of choice. Um, if Lee had his way about it, he would drink a stronger coffee. 
But um, yeah, but no, I do the breakfast blend. Lee would have Pike's Place every day, every day if I let him. Oh, you're still you're going to be in the mid 90s. Not feeling like fall, but it's not true. I guess that's a blessing, Donna. I know. Look, it's been looking. We're in North Carolina, but it has been unusually just hot, hot, hot here. And we're finally starting to fall a little bit. And I am so happy. I am so happy that I got up this morning. I had to go get my 10,000 mile service done on my vehicle. And when I walked outside, it was 61. It was 61. I was like, Wah! and then I was immediately like, Puck is nice. And I was immediately like, sweater weather. You know, you know, I was feeling it all. The, all that feeling was coming at the same time. And had it not been 7 o'clock in the morning, I think I would have just done. Have you ever seen the Eddie Murphy thing? Hello, my people. It is a good day. It would have been me. It would have been me, but I want my neighbors to love me, not hate me. So, yeah, yeah, it would have been me. So, okay, let's get back to it. Criticism. Let's talk about it. We get criticized. We get criticized for our choices. We get criticized when it makes people uncomfortable. What we've chosen. Think about that. Hi, Marlene. Um, that's a big one. When people don't like your decisions, they criticize you. And you want to say, I'm not going to let that bother me. And you say again, I'm not going to let that bother me. But it does, right? At least it does me. It does me. Now, am I better? I am better. Hey, Rosie, how are you, my friend? Um, am I better than I normally am? Sure, sure. Sure. I, I have learned in 60 years about a lot of things, right? I have learned. But but still, sometimes it gets you. Especially somebody that you care about who's doing it. You know what I'm saying? It can be it can be difficult. Hi Lori, good morning. Um so I wanted to talk a little bit about it because what I want you to know and this is what got me by criticism. This is what got me through a lot of these. Good morning, pops. How are you? Good to see you posting everybody. Say hello to my daddy-in-law, Mr. Harold Bibb. He is on. Um he is he is he is kicking. He is alive. He is full of smiles. He is still loving. I went and saw him not too long ago. Uh, Lee and I did, and um, I dug potatoes. That's a whole different story. We're not even going to get on that, but it's a whole different story. But so good to see him there. Tony says, yes, yeah, still bothers you. I get it. Uh, Kamini. Hi, Kamini. How are you, my friend? Good to see you on here. Um, Quintus has been low 50s, 60s. West Virginia. Hey, look, we track from West Virginia. You know Lee's parents live in West Virginia. And when we start seeing the weather falling in West Virginia, we know that the good times are coming. That fall is coming and the heat is going to be getting out of here when we start seeing that happen in West Virginia. And it has been for a week or so now, which is really good to see. So, okay, so criticism, y'all. Let's get back on this. It's hard. It is hard. Now, why, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this replay or maybe you know somebody who, who could use this, look, feel free to share this. Uh, completely shareable on my uh, regular page. Not so much from the groups because they're private groups. But if you, my page is public, share it. Look, lots of people, even if they don't want to admit it, they have problems with criticism. Oh, they don't have problem criticizing. They have problems taking the criticism or it hurt. You know what I'm saying? It, it just, it, it, this is a two-way street here. Hi, Mary. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is a lot of things. But look, I find like in our business, you know, I'm in direct sales with my company. And what I find is people who don't get direct sales are like, I don't get it. You're not making no money. Why you keep chosen that? Cho yeah, I said I said it. Chosen. Why you chosen that? Why you keep chosen? I don't understand. Go get a real job. And when they say stuff like that, that's criticism. Like it or not, that's a criticism. And that's how your heart takes it. That's how your brain takes it, right? You're doing something that either they don't get or is making you uncomfortable, making them uncomfortable that you're doing it, right? Um, and the point is, 
it's your choice. Or, or maybe it's how you raise your kids. Think about that. People always want to have an opinion about how, how everybody raising their kids. You know, I mean, everybody got an opinion. How you live your life, where you go to eat, who you marry, who you date, what house you're buying, what area you're going to. I got so much crud when I wanted to, when I wanted to move to North Carolina from my family. My family. Yeah. They want every reason why they were giving me every scenario as to why I should not move, why it would not be good. And let me tell you what God showed me. You know, it is true. I got, what if you get sick? What if this happens? What if that happens? We're not there for you. Let me tell you what God has done. God has not only answered those things for me. God has also answered the criticism. Because a couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer with a mass on my kidney. You all hear me talk about this all the time. It was such a big thing that happened and I was here. And you know what? My kids came down just like if I was local, they would come to the hospital probably when I was having the surgery. Uh, my cousin came down. God bless her. And she stayed a few days in between her and Ann and Lee. Guess what I got through? That. Guess what I got through? I got through the broken arm a year ago, almost November. And when, remember, I broke my arm last year. You think, oh, how are you going to do it? And everybody grabs that chance to criticize, to have a judgment, to have their opinion. And sometimes their opinions turn into criticisms. It's okay. Sometimes what you're doing in life, what you choose to do, what you're, you know, you know how when you line your ducks in a row and you know what's important to you and you're not trying to hurt anybody, you just simply, you know what you need in your life and you're going to go after it and do it, or this is what you want to do. And when you don't do something that somebody else wants you to do, oh, here come the criticism bus. Woo, woo, you know, they gonna come. So I thought it was crazy that the devotion that landed for this week is called something to consider with criticism. You know, God has something to say about just about everything. If you really picked up your Bible and you read it and you wanted to see a subject, you know what I'm saying? I need you to know something that, that if you really, did you realize he talks about just everything? Criticism, hate, jealousy, envy, opinionated people, people who don't want to believe in God, people who do believe in God, people who are bad people. I mean, he, just everything. If you look, if you research, you can find something that will help you get through it in the Bible. Or sometimes what you find, you're like, oh, I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I believe that. Why? Because it's easier to criticize the Bible. It's easier to criticize God and say, oh, no, that couldn't possibly be what he meant. Even though it's what he said, it couldn't possibly be what he meant. And yet it is. We sometimes, those who are criticized, are sometimes just as guilty of criticizing. I'm here with my hand up. You think that this is not uncomfortable for me? You think that I'm not seeing myself in some of this. Like, like sometimes you just can't help it. You know, something happened. You go, they're doing what? Why? Are they stupid? Oh, I've said it. I have said it. What were you thinking? Sometimes I say it to myself in the mirror, right? It's not just saying it about other people. It's talking about me. <sighs> But criticism, no matter what, look, even sometimes when it's warranted, sometimes it's warranted, whether you're the one making the criticism or rather you're the one receiving it. Sometimes it's warranted, but you know, it, sometimes I feel like it's how people do it because people, you know, I was just trying to help them. I was just trying to help them see the error of their ways. I just wanted them to know they was going down a bad direction. So you decided to criticize them and bring out 90% of what you think could happen. And the truth of the matter is 90% of what you think will happen will never happen. Will never happen. But criticism, especially when it comes from those that you care about, 
it can cut deep. It can. But let me let me let you in on a secret. You can get through it. Because sometimes it's not about you and what you're doing. It's about the person who's doing the criticism sometimes. It really is. People want to tell you, don't do this in your business. Don't do that in your business. Don't do that. You know, can you believe they're doing that? Or how about, how about, uh, it's a big one. I heard for years, Molly, don't talk about religion when it comes to your business. Now, I'm a firm believer. I don't talk about religion. If I, I, in the story, I don't talk about religion. I don't care if you Wesleyan, you Baptist, you Catholic, you Jiu-Jitsu. I think that's something else. I don't think Ju uh, Judaism. You notice how I get it wrong all the time, right? I don't care about that. I don't care about religion. Religion, <clears throat> a lot of religion just about destroyed my relationship with God, right? Because people get too caught up on the little things and don't get caught up on the big things. And they don't really read the Bible. They just cherry pick what they want out of the Bible. And instead of talking about the things that he really wants you to do, which is love people and drop them at the feet of Jesus. Well, I listened to that for years. I listen to people say, don't bring God into it, because if you do, you'll lose team members, you'll leave, lose followers, you'll lose family, you'll lose this, you'll lose that. Well, let me tell you something. My God is greater than all of that. And if there's somebody that's supposed to drop off, if there's somebody I'm supposed to lose, and by the way, I'm never going to lose them, they're going to choose to walk away. If you're watching this in one of my groups and you're like, I don't understand why she's always talking about God. If you leave, it's your choice. I didn't lose you. You choose to walk away. And I hope you don't. Because I believe that when I, I, when, when I attach the dots to God entering everything in my life, and when I can't bring God into something that I'm doing, I need to rethink what I'm doing or what I'm saying or how I'm responding because without him, I wouldn't be here. Why? That's it. You know how sometimes you have this friend that you want to be thankful for all the time? You know that person who you feel like if you didn't have that person to run to, if you didn't have that person to go share your deepest, darkest, if you didn't have that bestie, if you didn't have that you don't even think you'd be here. Like you're so thankful for that person in your life. People want to criticize me because Jesus is that person in my life. Now, Jesus has provided other avenues for me. Jesus has provided a wonderful, supportive husband, family who is there for me. Um, but you know what? Um, they don't always get it right either. They're human. But my one true friend who no matter what, I can open my Bible, I can fall on my knees in prayer, I can talk to him anywhere, anywhere, and he will show me something that says, child, you forget, I got you. I got you through all of it. I'm going to walk with you. Look, it's going to be hard. I'm not going to criticize you. I'm going to do the journey with you. And let me tell you about this friend. This friend that even when I walked away from him, even when I, yes, cursed him, didn't want him in my life, was in a really bad spot in my life, even when all those things happened, you know what he did? He just walked in silence with me. He said, there's going to come a time she's going to be ready. She's going to realize that I'm what, I'm what she needs, that I'm the person who's going to direct her to the right path, to the right people, to the right opportunity, to the right job, to the right friends. I'm going to be the person that helps her, but I'm also going to be the person who helps her move away from that dangerous area, that dangerous person. And sometimes bad things happen in our life in order to get us away from things that we don't need to be a part of. So criticism. There is a verse in the Bible, uh, Matthew twelve thirty four. Now look, this is taken from um, <clears throat> one of the instances in Matthew and the gospel, of course, where Jesus was dealing with demon possession and things like that. Um, but in this, in th verse 34, he said, you brought a vipers. How can you who are evil 
say anything good. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Mm. I want you to keep that in mind. Write that down. Write down Matthew 12, 34. And I want you to remember the end of that verse. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Okay? I'm going to give you something to consider today about criticism. And again, if you don't have this, this, this book called Embraced, this devotional, you need to get it. All Miss Liza Turkhurst uh, books are, are fabulous, but this one is great. We're going to start with Luke 21, 13 through 15. It will lead to an opportunity for you to witness. Therefore, make up your minds not to prepare your defense ahead of time. For I will give you such words and a wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. So listen to me. Hi, Irma. <coughs> I want you to think about criticism. <coughs> I want you to think about people that you know who want to criticize you all the time, right? <clears throat> Devil doesn't want me to get through this. All kinds of crud, right? Okay, listen. Think about criticism and think about what this verse just said. Luke 21, 13 to 15. It, criticism, let's replace it. Criticism, not it. Cri criticism will lead to an opportunity for you to witness, for you to be better than even you know you that you think you are. Therefore, make up your minds not to prepare your defense. Don't go into it going, I know what I'm going to say. Somebody say this, I'm going to say this, this, and this. Somebody say that, I'm going to say that, that, that. And somebody say that, I'm going to flip them off. Somebody say that, I'm going to cuss them out. Somebody say that, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Quit giving people a piece of your mind. We ain't got that much of our minds left, okay? Don't be giving them no pieces. Keep them, keep them, okay? Quit preparing what you know you're going to say. For I will give you such words and a wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. He going to give you what you need in the moment as long as you bring him into the moment. Because if you keep him out of the moment, you're always going to be the person who takes the wrong step and you're going to be just as bad as the criticizer. That's what happens. Criticism is awful. That's usually my first thought when a friend or a family member or even an acquaintance makes it clear that they don't like something I've done or something I've said. My pride says, how dare you? My heart says, I want a chance to explain. My soul says, Jesus, am I really off base here? My mind says, why do I open myself up like this? And my feelings simply say, Ouch, man, that hurts. Sometimes criticism is fair. Maybe I messed up and it would serve me well maybe to reconsider. Other times criticism is nothing but rotten spew. And boy, does it stink. But if I get stunk and I get stuck in the stink, it serves no good purpose. If I get stuck in the stink, it serves no good purpose. If I get stuck in the criticism, it serves no good purpose. Might there be another way to look at really harsh criticism? Is there a way to get past the hurt to see something about the one that's criticizing you that will soften your heart towards them? Recently, I stumbled on an article about the armadillo Lizard. Have y'all ever seen an, an armadillo? They're the craziest looking things. I don't know. God has a sense of humor about so many animals, I'm telling you, but an armadillo is one of them. This fascinating creature has hard and pointy scales that have don't mess with me written all over them. You, you ever think like you do too? Are you that person? Are you that person that you got like those pointy scales that you're like, you're just waiting for the first person to want to take a jab at you? <coughs> because you're on your defense right away. Remember, stop preparing your defense. So you're already defensive. You're not even going to let anybody in. You're not going to let anybody say anything. You know, you know what you want to tell them, right? You that armadillo? It has don't mess with me written all over them. But like all tough creatures, this lizard has a vulnerable place. Everybody 
has a vulnerable place. The armadillo lizard's tough exterior wraps around its back but softens at the underbelly. When threatened, the lizard grabs its tail and displays a prickly, intimidated posture to keep other creatures away. At that point, the rest of the body serves only one purpose, to hide and protect its most vulnerable part. So what does a strange desert creature have to do with criticism? I know you're like, Molly, where are you going with this? In an effort to protect my underbelly, your underbelly, where you can be hurt, I sometimes get all wrapped up in myself and tragically forget the underbelly of the person criticizing. The place where they are vulnerable and might be hiding things, protected beneath their harsh words and a prickly exterior. Mm, hi, Paula. Good morning. Listen to me. Listen to me. Did you hear that part? Sometimes it's about the person who's spewing the criticism. What are they trying to protect by coming at you? What are they, like what, that maybe your decisions were good and they don't want to have to swallow that? Maybe you, you are happier and, and, and you seem to be happy with what you're doing, but God knows they don't want to swallow that because they're so unhappy where they're at at this point in their life. This is a place, this is a place they may never let me see. It's the storage place for their hurt and their disappointments. It holds the root cause of their skepticism and the anger that probably has very little to do with me. For the mouth speaks where the heart, what the heart is full of. Remember Matthew 12, 34, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And from the overwhelm of their hurt that they spewed, remember behind every harsh critic is usually a broken hearted person desperate for love. If I forget the other person's vulnerability, I am tempted to start storing up my own hurt, skepticism, anger, and disappointments. If I remember this underbelly, I have a much greater chance to keep it all in perspective. I can let my reaction be a good example to this other person, just as our key verse, Luke 21, 13 through 15, reminds us. It will lead to an opportunity for you to witness. Whew. Therefore, make up your minds not to prepare your defense ahead of time, for I will give you, for God will give you such words and a wisdom that none of your adversaries will ever be able to resist or contradict. When criticism comes, and it will, I must make up my mind not to worry about defending myself. I can resist the urge to become prickly and use it as an opportunity to be a witness. A witness of the love, the grace, and the mercy of Jesus. Things I desperately need myself. Now listen, I'm going to give you an example here. If you're watching this and you're in the Onward No Matter What group, you know you've been part of this group probably 10 years or more, some of you. Something that I thought would end up being for a couple of hundred uh, <coughs> representatives <coughs> who really didn't have an upline or, 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 or support system or whatever, or a place that we could really talk and to try to stay positive, right? Like onward, no matter what has been that. And what I thought would be for a hundred, maybe 200 has turned into something that's 15, 18. Uh, at one time, I think we had all, we had 20,000 representatives in there. Who knew that God was going to open up a door for that much responsibility? But here's where the vulnerability and the honesty comes in. When I first started that group, man, there were people who will tell you who've been with me the whole time, man, I was tough. I was so tough. I wasn't just like the tough love, tough mama. I was almost really tough. And especially if they came after me, they came after me. And um, I had somebody just three months ago who, who was new to the group who came on and she saw one of these lives <coughs> and she came on and she said, what is all this religious crap that she's bringing in here into this group? I did not join 
this group for this. I joined this group about Avon. And I have to tell you something. She was going on and on and on. And I hadn't seen it. It had been there for hours. I had been working. I need you to know that the old Molly, the old Mama Molly would have come out and said, look here. If you if you do not like you judgmental person, if you don't like what I'm bringing to the table, I didn't ask you to come in here. So you feel free to just walk out the door or I will set your tail on the curb. I think about myself being that harsh sometimes. And sometimes it's embarrassing because you know when you're doing it, you don't you don't see yourself doing it. And I found that what I was doing was reacting to the hurt because all my life, what, people had come at me. All my life I had been judged that if I didn't do what people wanted me to do or what they thought I should do, that I was going to get their wrath, their criticism. So you know, you learn how to like uh, the armadillo. You learn how to put those spikes up and say, nope. Don't come near me because I'm going to prick you. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to be a prick. There's just no other way to put it. <laughs> I remember I sat back and I said, God, what is this all about? I read it. I read it again. And I read it again. And I read it again. The devil was over here going, girl, you need to crush her. You need to let her know what you are all about. God was over here saying, but you're not all about that anymore. This person obviously has had something happen to them. Obviously. That makes them want to come at anything that is God. And what's really funny is they probably don't know yet that it's not God that they really have a problem with. It's maybe the church they were a part of. Maybe some Christian who definitely wasn't a good Christian and was completely judgmental in everything they said and everything that they did with them. And they've had enough and they don't want to hear either. <clears throat> I took a moment and I just, you know, I prayed, please give me the words because, you know, I could have sat on it for two, two days and then came with something really witty and hurtful and justice criticizing and believe me there's a part of me that could have come at her and I could have cut her up and that's not what was needed and I came in and I said hey I said I want you to know this is just something extra that I do for those who need it and if you don't feel like you need it I need you to know it's okay to scroll but there is no part of my life, not my business, not my family, not my job, not my marriage, not my relationships, not anything. There is nothing that I do in my life now that God is not a part of. So when you choose to come in and be a part of a group that I am manning, the group that I am trying to admin, or if you're following me, maybe you're following me because of Avon. Maybe you're following me because you think I'm funny. I don't get that. Maybe you just follow me because you can relate to me, my life, things that have happened. No matter what it is, I am doing you a disjustice if I do not tell you and allow you to figure out what gets me through. And what has already got me through. And I said, and so I need you to know this was not meant to come at you. None of this. Please don't take it that way. This is not personal, but this is definitely a reflection of how I handle life because times are hard right now. And if it can help one person, it may not help the other 18,000, but if it can help one person get through their day and realize there is somebody there walking with them to help them through the sick child, to help them through the loss, to help them through the fact that they're going through a divorce, that helps them through the fact that they have been hurt by the church, to help them get through the fact that their best friend really wasn't their best friend, that helps them understand that when nobody else supports them, they have somebody there that will support them no matter what. Let me tell you something, ma'am, this is why I do it. And if you don't want to be a part of it, I really hope you don't leave 
because there's so many other reasons to be a part of this besides just Tuesday mornings. But I really hope you stay because something may happen one day that you are not expecting and you may have this real need for God or answers in your life. And it just may show up in the form of a Tuesday morning Molly's Moments with Jesus. And it may be something that you need. And if not, no hard feelings. And I only wish you the best. I had people within 24 hours private message me. And they said, my goodness, how you have grown. I know how you would have reacted to that, what you would have said. I know what you would have done in the past. And my goodness, the leader you have become to not react in the moment was spewing back. There were no less than 10 people who contacted me who had been following me. And I thought, there's growth. And even though at the time that this happened, I was almost 60 years old then. You know, when people say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, this is who I am, just accept it. We've just got to bend ourselves. No, 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 no. I don't have to bend myself to anything because when there is true change needed, I need to be the person to step up and do the change. And there was real change needed. Not that I wasn't a good leader before then, but I had the possibilities to be a better leader. I learned that I could lead with love. I learned that I could share my faith, not my church, not my religion. I could share my faith. I could help people in other areas than just how do you acquire customers for Avon? That God had a purpose for me to come out and say, life is not all about one thing. It's not all just about Avon. And I don't know any factor of my life that God in some way or another has not been present. And even when I wasn't on good terms with him, I found myself during those struggles going, please, God, please, 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 please take care of this, God. And if you do, God, I'm going to do better. God, I'm going to do, God, I'm going to do that. Oh, all those promises about what you're going to do. And really all he wants is for you to love him faithfully. For you to love him even through the bad stuff. For you to stop criticizing the, the God who sent his son to die for you. And to know that he is only here to see you through the worst of times. I get it. Franny says, Molly, it, it is my faith that has helped me deal with the loss of Robin. Oh, Franny. <clears throat> I know that, sister. I know that. I feel really bad for people who lose people. And they don't have the promise that they're going to see them again one day. Because this is what I know. And you criticize me if you want. I can take it. Big shoulders. If you know God as your personal Savior. And you accept and you're thankful for all he's done for you. Sending the son to die on the cross. And you have a want to to spend eternity. Because I got news for you. This life is not it. There's something after this, y'all. And you need to be ready because I don't know if you've been watching the news or you've been watching social media or you've been, been hearing the gossip, but there are people who are dying in their teens. There are people dying in their 20s and their 30s and their 50s, 60s, 70s. Yeah, some in their 80s or 90s. You almost expect that. But there are people we are not promised the next breath far less the next day. And for my people, why do I keep doing this? Because for my people, you are my people. I want to know that if something happens to me today, if something happens to you today, I want to know I'm going to see you on that other side. I want to know that you are going to be somebody that I am going to embrace again. 
So why do I do this to, to help you get through a different, a different hard time in your life? Because for me, every time I've brought God back into my life, it has been better. But here's the key. Somebody's mowing their lawn. Sorry if you hear that. Here's the key. Now that I have God in my life on an everyday basis, I don't know how he's put up with me. On an everyday basis, I allow him to, if I'm having a bad day, God, you see it, right? Right? You know, sucky day, Lord, sucky day. I'm not even going to pretend it is. God, just help me get through it. Good day. God, good day. Good day. Woo! Good day. New customers. Woo! Good day. Yeah, me and Lee are getting along. Woo! Good days. My sons are good. My grandkids are good. Good day, right? Good day. It's easy to bring him in on the hard times. I know this sounds opposite. Please, God, help me. It's a hard time. But we tend to toss him to the side when it's a good day. Anymore, I look out and go, yeah, the birds are on the feeder. Good day. My garage door went up today. Good day, right? Good day. My bills got paid today. I don't know how them other bills going to get paid next week. But guess what? Them bills for the day they got paid. Jesus, thank you for that. You made a way. When I bought him into the every day. Even my bad days are not the worst. I still deal with anxiety. Y'all, I'm not going to lie to you. I still, I still got anxiety. I know I do. I've got it. It sneaks up on me. It tries to grab a hold of me. And I battle it with Jesus in my life every single day. My heart rate's shooting up. I think I'm going to die. I have no reason for it to be that way. Except the devil just doesn't want me to do what I need to do. And now I, I, I work through it. Even if I'm feeling it, I work through it. And you know what happens when it's over? I made it. I made it, y'all. It was a hard anxiety attack, but I made it. Now I'm watching people take their lives because of anxiety, because of the attacks. I need them to know there's another way. How hopeless must you feel to think that that is the only way to get peace? There's another way. And if you're letting criticism rule your life, everybody who wants to tell you how you should dress, how you wish you should work, what you should do, should you have a side business, should you not, um, don't cut your hair that way. What are you doing? Why are you wearing that? Why are you going there? Why aren't you coming with us? Blah, blah, blah. Everything you do, it seems to be a criticism. Know that that's not about you. Most of the time, some of the time, I think most of the time, it's about what they're struggling with. Somewhere underneath where that soft belly area is, where they're most vulnerable. Yeah, they're suffering with that. And it comes out at other people because you know what? Who wants to look at your own vulnerabilities? Who wants to look at all the struggles that you have? Nobody wants to embrace those, right? They don't want to embrace that kind of stuff. They just want to embrace the good stuff they can control. Stop thinking that you have control. You ain't got no control. You are being fooled to think that you are controlling anything. And let the master have control and let him lead you. And when it comes to criticism, quit trying to prepare to criticize back. Take their breath away and respond in a way that only Jesus would with love. And realize that it's not always about you. Sometimes it's just about what they're hiding underneath so love them through it or walk away from it some people don't some people want to want, want they just don't even want to talk about the fact that they have a problem with criticism matter of fact they live in fear of who the next person is that's going to critique them that's going to criticize them i'm here to tell you if you're hanging with people who are that way all the time, I kind of think 
then maybe you need to rethink the relationships. And when you and, and when it's something that's detrimental to you, it doesn't mean you don't love those people. It means it's okay to love them from over there, that they may not be in your best interest today. And as far as what your beliefs are, you're welcome to them. <clears throat> you know, people get upset. Why does God let this happen? Why does God let that happen? Why? Because we have freedom of choice. I say it all the time, but I don't think people hear it. We choose our direction. We choose what we're going to do. And sometimes our choices break his heart. But you know what he doesn't do? He doesn't leave us when we make a bad decision. He doesn't walk away. Sometimes I think we feel like he's not there because we don't hear him. And <clears throat> that's not reality. The reality is we're so involved with a bad decision that we made that we don't realize he's standing right there with us just waiting for us to turn and say, Ah, there you are. Could you just take my hand, God? Could you just hold it for a minute? Could you give me the verse that I need at this time? Do you give me the right person? Give me the right devotion, God. I just need to feel you. I just need to know you're there. And I promise you, he'll show up. Maybe not with your genie in the bottle wish, but he will get you through it if you let him. So those people who want to criticize you, just understand that's coming from their underbelly it's coming from their armor and if they're concentrating on you y'all they don't got to think about them and their own struggles so love them through it instead of getting defensive and trying to take them on and one up them one up them never never makes anything right and you think it's going to make you feel good and in the moment it will ha 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 i got them and then for me when I pass the mirror in the hallway, I have to say, my gosh, Molly, how in the world were you any different than them for trying to one-up their game? Oh, I have been a good one-upper my whole life, but I have been trying to change that for the last three or four years. I don't want to one-up them. I want to love them through it and let them know no matter what their hurt is or why they're acting this way that I love them and I get it and I understand and so does God pray for him that's the best thing you could do for him just pray for him God's going to protect you through that and if you've got something you need to change he's not going to leave you alone until you're ready for the change right so be careful what you ask for because you might just get it and isn't that the scariest thing in life today for sure so um, I love you guys. I hope you're having a beautiful Tuesday like I am here. It is just so beautiful outside. I am just so happy that fall is trying to make an entrance. Um, I will be having a team meeting tonight for my team who's on here. It is just us again. We have ended the Avon Nation summer calls with the Learn and Earns with Molly. Um, but then afterwards, Onward, folks, I will be on. We will get back to our lives there just with us and the Onward No Matter What group. So we will go back to that tonight, which will probably be about 8.30, quarter of 9. So I hope to see many of you there. Share this if you think somebody needs it. If you're catching the replay, hashtag replay, so I know you've been here. If it's your first time, let me know. Um, if there's something I can help you with, let me know. I'll have this up on YouTube soon, so you'll be able to see the replay there too. Have a great day. Love you guys. Bye-bye.